Have you ever wanted just a little more chaos, just a little more drama in your Sims 2 game? Have you ever felt that your Sims just don't die often enough from causes other than old age? Well, this is the video for you. Today, I'm gonna share with you my favorite mods and methods of making death and disease more realistic in The Sims 2. You can use all or most of these together like I do, or you can just pick and choose the ones you want depending on the effect that you're trying to achieve. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's get started. The first mod I'm gonna share and probably the most extreme of all of them is called Real Sickness. You can find this mod on More Awesome Than You and it is an attempt to make sicknesses more realistic in the game. It doesn't impact how often your Sims become sick, but the severity of the illness once they do. So you can see here some of the stats that the creator listed. There is a download right here on the front page, but this is not the one you want. Um, apparently, if you download this first one, it will just wipe out your entire population. So what you want to do is follow this link for this version, which is posted later on in the forums and get this one. I will link directly to this post. And as always, I'll link everything I'm talking about today down below in the description box. To show you an example of this mod working in the game, which caught me completely off guard, here is a scene from my last Pleasant View episode where Rosa Lothario passed away of the flu in the middle of the night. I wasn't expecting this. I didn't think this was gonna happen. I kind of forgot about this mod being in my mods folder. And all of a sudden I'm playing and Rosa just drops dead in the middle of the night. So this is the kind of thing that can happen with this mod and it does not discriminate. Children, teens, adults, um, anybody can be affected by this and it seems to be kind of random because her needs weren't even that bad at the time now you shouldn't let this scare you off from using the mod because i have found that it is very rare i've had many sims get sick with the flu and as long as you take a relatively good care of them sometimes i haven't even taken good care of them at all and they've still survived i don't have just like all my sims dying at once like i have heard reports of that has never happened to me i think when that happens to people they may have been using the original version version of this mod but who knows all I know is in my game I've only had one sim die but it does add that extra realism that your sims could actually die because in the vanilla game sims never die of the flu if we look on the sims wiki here it does say that sims can potentially die from food poisoning holds are not fatal but will develop into pneumonia pneumonia is fatal if untreated influenza is fatal if untreated and this is all in the vanilla game. And mystery disease is fatal and extremely contagious. Although it says this, I have never one time had a Sim die of any of these illnesses before I got the realistic sickness mod. This is just my personal experience. Let me know if you've ever had a Sim die in the vanilla game. I just think it is very, very difficult. And if you wanna add just a little bit more realism and a little bit more of a chance for your Sims to die of pneumonia or mystery disease or the flu, then get this mod and you may have a Sim or two die eventually. Now, if you are just a little too afraid of the real realistic sickness, but once again, I don't think you have to be, but if you are, um, there is another mod on Mod The Sims called Disease Mod by Simler90. Some people prefer to use this mod instead to add a little more realism to the illnesses in the game. You can't use both of these together, so you'll have to choose one, either realistic sickness or the disease mod. I have never personally used this mod because I am happy with the first one, but let's just take a look at what it does if you're interested. So it basically works the same way. It makes it so that the game calculates recovery differently and here are the stats you can read more about that here there are also some optional mods you might want to get and you know what I know I said I was happy with the old mod but the more I read about this disease mod the more I think I want to try this one out um, so if you use this leave a comment and let me know how you like it I really like the optional downloads here so grandma's comfort soup mod normally in an unmodded game your sim drinks grandma's comfort soup or eats it or whatever and they're automatically cured of all their illness, which that's not very realistic, right? So this optional mod makes it so that eating the soup gradually decreases the severity of one of the Sims diseases. The more they eat, the lower the severity of the disease will get. You can have one soup after another and it will cure your Sims disease eventually, but this means that if you wanna get cured quickly, you will have to eat multiple bowls, which means that your Sim will get fat and it just has all of these repercussions. So this actually sounds really good to me. And I think the Grandma's Comfort Soup add-on alone is enough to, to convince me to try this one instead of the other one. So there's also a disease chance-based spread mod. So normally when the disease attempts to spread, it's a 100% spread rate. 
Um, now, this new optional mod makes it so that whenever the game tries to spread the disease to a sim, there is a chance the sim will con contract the disease. I find that to be much more realistic as well. You're not 100% going to get a cold if you're in the room with somebody who has a cold, but there is a chance you will contract it. Um, it also takes into account sims who have high body skill, who are fit, and werewolves, they will be less likely to get the disease, and sims who have low hygiene are more likely to control the disease. So this mod actually adds a lot of realism and it's more updated than the old one that I currently use. In the middle of making this video, I have changed my recommendation and I recommend that if you want more realistic sickness and illness, get this disease mod by Simler and get the additional add-ons. If we go to the files here, there you'll want to get the grandma's comfort soup mod, the disease chance-based spread mod, and the disease mod either regular or advanced. I would recommend the advanced. So you need a total of three files to get the full mod experience. Whichever of the disease mods you choose, whether the old one or the new one by Simler, you will also want to use frequent disease processing by Saijon. And I actually use frequent disease processing and faster disease processing both. So what this mod does is updates the disease severity every cycle rather than every six cycles, which results in more frequent disease processing. So this in conjunction with a more realistic disease mod is really going to increase those chances. Not to the point where it's insane and all your sims are just dropping dead, but to the point where you might actually have a flu death occasionally. The next mod I want to share with you is called More Dangerous Fire, and you can find this on Leafish. And there are two versions you can get, More Dangerous Fire and Even More Dangerous Fire. I personally use More Dangerous Fire, and if you've watched any of my Twitch streams, you have probably seen this in action a few times. This is a global mod to make fire more dangerous in The Sims 2. The, the more dangerous fire, the less lesser of the two, is the balanced version. Fire spreads faster and destroys quicker. If you act quickly, it can still be brought under control, but if not, it can get out of hand. Then in the much more dangerous fire version, fire spreads and destroys twice as fast as in the more dangerous version. I have just moved Sid Roseland into a little starter house here in my test neighborhood, and we're gonna see if he can get a fire going for us. Sid has no cooking skill, and we are going to delete the fire alarm. So you can really see what this mod can do. We're going to try it with mac and cheese and see if he can start a fire. If that doesn't work, I have another idea. Sometimes your Sims will get lucky and make it through their first dish without starting a fire. <laughs> I'm hoping Sid is not so lucky here. I'm going to try and make him step away while the... Nope. Okay, never mind. <laughs> He made it. So one surefire way that you can start a fire on a lot, um, I learned this in a live stream actually, is if you purchase a grill and you have your sim cook on the grill indoors, it is going to start a fire. So let's have him go and grill some hot dogs in the living room. This is a terrible idea, Sid. You shouldn't grill hot dogs in the living room. Okay, um, there's a guy. Okay, see, it starts a fire almost immediately. Now you're going to get to see what the more dangerous fire mod can do. So this is going to spread very quickly. I'm going to try and attempt to have Sid extinguish it. I swear, if he just extinguishes this fire and that's it, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> okay, here it goes. See, it's starting to spread. It's starting to spread more. And if you had the even more dangerous fires mod, it would spread twice as fast as this. Can you imagine? So he's trying to extinguish, but he's just not getting it. He's just not getting it under control. I think I'll have him stop and go call an emergency service. Okay, no, 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 no. Don't call service. Call emergency. Oh, no, he just caught on fire. Oh, my God. He just caught on fire. Extinguish yourself. Extinguish yourself. Oh, go oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, I know I caused this to happen, but it's still traumatic. Extinguish yourself. I was just having him walk over and try to call a the fire department. And look at this. Look at this. This is what happens with more dangerous fire. So you have to really... Think about if you want this in your game or not. I do have it because I just don't feel like fires are dangerous enough in the vanilla game. 
So I do use this in my personal game. I don't think I would use the more dangerous fires and he is dead. Okay, here comes Grim. So if you have a Sim living by your by themselves, it can be very, 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 very traumatic. And they will probably most likely die with this mod. This is the first time I've had a Sim living alone. Um, oh no, the dog, not the puppy, not the puppy. Can dogs die in the fire? I don't think so. Um, anyway, so if you have a Sim living alone and they start a fire and they don't have a fire alarm, Things are gonna get rough like you see here. If you do use this and you don't want your Sims to die, make sure you have a smoke alarm in your houses because if the fire department were to come, they can usually get it under control without anybody burning up. And if you had roommates or other people living in the house, usually they can extinguish a Sim if they catch on fire. Um, we had this happen in my Strange Town stream and everybody managed to live through it barely. But poor Sid here was not so lucky. He was home alone. He grilled hot dogs in the living room and it just wasn't his day. He bit the dust. It also destroys furniture and things really fast. The, I love how the coals are still burning over here. Great job. So the next mod I'm gonna talk about is a little morbid, but it's called death by childbirth. Sims have a 10% chance of dying in childbirth, which increases if they're less than 14 days away from becoming an elder by 1% per day. Every day that they get closer to becoming an elder, they have a higher chance of passing away during childbirth. This is also a tunable mod, which means that if you know how to edit packages, you can go in and change the percentages to whatever you like. I use this mod in my game just how it is. I leave the 10% chance and the 1% per day. I have never had a Sim pass away from childbirth yet, but it is a very small chance. And I like this because it does add that extra layer of realism. And this, I think this would also be great if you played a medieval neighborhood. People were more likely to pass away in childbirth uh, in those days. So you could even increase this a little bit if you wanted to play with it in a medieval neighborhood, but I play with it in my normal neighborhoods. So as always, make sure you read through this. Um, I use this with Pregnancy Controller Lite and I don't have any problems with it. It probably will not be compatible with things like Inteen. And Midge gives some instructions here if you want to tinker around with it. There's no way I could recreate this in the game for you without just having tons of Sims get pregnant and give birth and try to see if one of them passes away. So I'm not going to try to do gameplay on this particular mod for you, but you can see, you can imagine how this would work in your own game. Like I said, I've had a lot of pregnancies since I've had this in my game and I haven't had a single death yet, but it just adds that extra risk to your game. So you know that it's possible that it could happen. And when it does, it'll be rare and it will be dramatic. And if you want to use it, but you don't want that 10% chance, you want it to be less or more, it's really easy to adjust this. And I can show you how really quick. I've downloaded the mod here on my desktop and all you're gonna do is right click and choose open with SimPE. You probably need to be a little bit familiar with SimPE, but even if you're not, um, it's not that hard to, to figure out. Here we are in SimPE. Now, another way you can open this package is you can go to File, Open, and then you can navigate to the file in your Downloads folder. So Documents, EA Games, The Sims 2, Downloads, and then find the mod in here and open it. Once you open it, you will see Interaction Labor Pains, Tuning Chance of Death. This is what you need to focus on, the Beacon Tuning Chance of Death. So the base survival rate, right now it's set to 90, and that means that there's a 10% chance that your sim will not survive. So if you wanna change this, you could change this to 80, and that would give a 20% chance of dying. Or you could change it to 95, that would give a 5% chance of dying. So you can just change whatever you wanna change it to here, and then click Commit File. You can also change the age decay threshold. So right now it's set to 14 days before becoming an elder, your sim will start to have an increase in chance of passing away from childbirth. You could change this to 10 days or 15 days or whatever you wanna change it to. Once you make the change, hit commit file. 
And then finally, you can change the age decay rate, which right now is set to 1%. So starting at, since I changed this to 10, starting at 10 days before becoming an elder, your Sims will get a 1% increase in passing away from childbirth. You can increase this to 5%, 2%, any, whatever you wanna change it to. You could change it right here in this box next to DEC and commit file. Once you've made all the changes you wanna make, just save, click the save package, and then put this package back into your downloads folder or if it's already there, you're fine. The next mod I wanna talk about, I. I went over this mod briefly in my must have mods for realism in The Sims 2 video, but it also belongs in this video, and that is the alternate pregnancy controller light. I saw this mod in action in my first Edgewood Let's Play. My sim started to have preterm contractions and we had to really take care of her to stop her from having a miscarriage. So here is the footage of that. This is what that looks like in the game. Your sim will start holding their stomach like they're getting sick and you'll get a little pop-up that says you need to take care of their diet. So it really is based on your sim's motives. If your sim starts getting really hungry and uncomfortable and they're not taking care of themselves, during the pregnancy they can miscarry. I have not had a miscarriage yet but I have had a couple of close calls. You can also tune this mod yourself if you want to increase or decrease the chances of miscarriage just like I showed you in the previous mod. Now let's talk about death by satellite. I know it's not the most realistic type of death especially when it comes to the real world but it is kind of realistic for the sims. So I'm going to cover it anyway. Sid here has been revived and he has volunteered to help us with Death by Satellite. He is currently cloud watching, which if you didn't know, anytime a sim cloud watches, they have a very, very small chance of being hit by a satellite falling from the sky. <laughs> Once again, I know it's not the most realistic death, but I wanted to cover it in this video anyway, in case you want to make some changes to how it works. There are several mods that I can recommend for this. The first one is Saijon's Deadly Satellites. So this just increases the chance of satellite death. Under normal circumstances, the game checks for death by satellite only once when a sim starts their cloud watching. So as soon as they start cloud watching, the game checks. Is there a, there's a 1% chance. If they survive that, then the rest of the time they're cloud watching, they're perfectly fine. If they don't die, basically if they don't die immediately, they're fine. But with this mod, it checks for satellite death every batch of 5 to 24 animation cycles, or roughly once every 30 game minutes. It uses the same 1% chance, so that means it takes an average of 50 hours of cloud watching to get nailed by a satellite. But at least it's possible to force a satellite death should you wish for story purposes. There is an easier way to force a satellite death, which I will show you in a moment, but this, I, I like to use this just for the increased risk. The next mod I would recommend is Customizable Chance of Death by Satellite. This is on Mod The Sims, and of course it will be linked down below. Now what this does is allow you to change the percentage that you want your Sims to be hit by satellite. So I could recommend this for realism because you could use this to completely turn off the chance. If you feel that this is not realistic, you don't want this in your game, um, then you could just turn it off completely. So once again, you're gonna tune this the same way that I showed you how to tune the childbirth mod you open it up in sim pe click on chance of dead and over here you can change the percentage so you could change this to zero percent and then satellite death would never happen in your game or you could increase it you could increase it to five percent ten percent whatever you like and finally there is one more mod um, regarding satellite deaths that i found on symbology it's right here under increased abduction and our die by satellite. So you'd want to get the death by satellite higher odds. What this does is this is ups the odds of death by satellite from 1% to 3%. So if you just wanted a slight increase of satellite deaths and you didn't want to bother with tuning the other mod yourself, you could just download this one, throw it in your downloads folder, and you'd have a 3% chance instead of a 1% chance. Now, if you want to force a satellite death, which I'm going to do just for the heck of it, I guess I just like to torture poor Sid here. You can shift click on your sim with testing cheats enabled to spawn Rodney's death creator. 
click on it and you can choose any death that you like. And this could be helpful for screenshots, storytelling, that kind of thing. But just so we can see this elusive death by satellite, we're gonna choose it right here. And then he goes back into the cloud watching position and there goes the satellite. So that's what it looks like. And once again, not the most realistic death in the world, but hey, it's possible, right? People have been struck by things falling from the sky before. I do make it a very rare occurrence in my game, but I don't rule it out completely. In fact, this has only ever happened to me one time during one of my very first live streams. And if you guys have been watching my stuff for a long time, you'll probably remember when Anthony's son got hit by a satellite out of nowhere. And finally, there's one more type of death that you may or may not want in your game. And that is the death by Murphy bed. Now I have never experienced this type of death in my game. I, honestly, I don't use Murphy beds that often. In the unmodded game, there is a 5% chance that your sim will die from a Murphy bed when they pull it down. With this mod, this is the same uh, creator who created the customizable satellite death mod. You can go in and tune this and change the percentage. Or you can just download the actual, uh, there's three versions of the mod that you could actually just download and you don't even have to tune them if you don't want to. But if you find this death very unrealistic, you could completely turn it off using this customizable mod, or you could decrease the chances or increase the chances. Now, I like to leave this type of death in my game because I mean, it could happen, right? Somebody could get smushed by a Murphy bed. I just make the chance very, very low. So the three options that you have here is a 5% chance with no checks. So this mod keeps the 5% chance that EA gave us, but disables the body skill and mood checks so that any sim is eligible. Normally it would check to see if your sim has less than five body skill points and if they're in a bad mood. Mood. If so, then they have that 5% chance. So you could take this mod and make it a 5% chance for anybody regardless of body skill and regardless of mood. Number two is a 20% chance with no checks. So this mod increases the chance to 20% and disables the body skill and mood checks so that any sim is eligible. And then finally, a 100% chance. So anybody who opens that Murphy bed is gonna is gonna get squashed. I don't know why you would want that, but if you did, there it is. And obviously you can tune these to change it to 0% or whatever you like. Another really good resource for death and disease in The Sims 2 is Saijon's website. Um, there is a very good article here called A Study of Death in The Sims 2, and you can look at all the different types of deaths and read about exactly how they work. This could be helpful if you're trying to produce a certain result in your game or trying to avoid it. And my favorite part is lies and propaganda, fake deaths. There are many rumored ways to die in The Sims 2 that are absolutely not true that Saijon found out about. One is heat, and that, but then he says, okay, I'm wrong about this. Contrary to my previous statement, there is a very small chance an overheated Sim can spontaneously combust. It's the fire that kills the Sim though. The heat itself is not fatal. I have never had a sim spontaneously combust but that would be really interesting to see in my game let me know if you've ever seen that one cold is another myth sims cannot die from cold i really wish there was a mod that made it so that they can die from cold i haven't been able to find one but i feel like that would make it much more realistic and i would love to have that in my game where they could die from heat or cold um, but apparently while passed out from cold a sim can die of hunger but they cannot die directly from being frozen. And that's unfortunate. I think that should be a cause of death in the game, personally. Evil kites. So kites flown in a lightning storm have a 30, 50, or 70% chance of attracting lightning. This is true for any kite, not just evil ones, and the kite is not directly responsible for the death. Once again, it would be the lightning. So falling in an elevator causes a significant mood decrease. Um, but there's no death check and none of these motive drops can be fatal in and of themselves. So you will not die from falling in an elevator and nothing. Apparently your sim won't just die for nothing. 
<laughs> I never heard that rumor, but apparently somebody must have thought that at some point. These are the ways that I make death and disease more realistic in The Sims 2. The most important mods, in my opinion, are realistic sickness or disease mod, faster and more frequent disease processing, more dangerous fire, death by childbirth, and miscarriage. If you use all these together, it will add an extra layer of risk to your game. Nothing just like completely insane, but over time you will tend to see more deaths, more illness, in a way that's realistic, in my opinion, or as close to realistic as we can get in The Sims 2, right? Do you know of any other mods that increase realism when it comes to death and disease that I didn't talk about today? If you do, leave a comment down below and let me know. I'm always looking for new ways to make my game more realistic. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys with a new video very soon. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitch where I stream The Sims 2 three times a week. Thank you so much for watching.